Okay, so in, um, in medieval Europe, there was a circuit of entertainment, kind of like uh, improv and uh, stand-up comedy that we have today, where fools or court jesters would learn what people liked, what people were entertained by, and then bring it to court. And the best of the best would get the equivalent of a Saturday Night Live job, stable entertainment. Renaissance playwrights co-opted this idea as kind of a way to bridge their new ideas to the audience. It was a familiar trope to groundlings and commoners, and it gave them a lot of creative liberty. I argue that Joss Whedon is a true inheritor of Shakespeare in that he has embraced this idea of the professional fool, one that can see and talk about things that the social parameters of a play don't allow for, and has applied it to his science fiction fantasy uh, TV shows as kind of a way of translating, inviting, and uh, being kind of the audience standard for characters. Uh, Spike in Buffy the Vampire Slayer is specifically a good example. I'm going to use one episode, it's called The Lover's Walk, to talk about how Spike manages to fill these three criteria. So first of all, Spike is the translator. So there is a lot of clashing of worlds going on in Joss Whedon TV shows. You have supernatural elements, you have the real world, and then you have the little isolated world of the central characters. Since Spike is not central to any of these, at various points he belongs to different realms and breaks different tropes, he is allowed, he can, has the freedom to kind of move between them and provide background context for a lot of different situations that most of our primary characters don't know. There's only so many things you can find in a library book. So the, that leads directly to the truth telling because since Spike isn't bound by any of the social parameters, he doesn't care about social consequences. So when characters, like in Lover's Walk, we have two main characters, Buffy and Angel, who are pretending to be friends, and he calls them out on it because they're not. There's no consequence for Spike. He gets to provide the insight and move on. Um, Spike is also very much the other. He looks like a 70s punk rocker that stepped out of a Billy Idol music video. So visually, he's that. He's also a vampire. And throughout the show, at every single stage, whether he's an ally, whether he's has a soul or not, he is always an outsider in some way. So he has this objective point of view that mirrors the audience's point of view and brings that as kind of a, an invitation, a way to bridge any misunderstandings. Seeing, seeing parallels, classical tropes like this, I feel is very important because not only do we have a chance to revisit the classics in a new way, we can give pop culture the opportunity to create a metric that will divide the art from just the entertainment. Thank you.